All right, so now let's talk about solving rational inequalities. Okay, I'm going to do a couple of examples. All right, so here's the first one. All right, so solve x plus 1 divided by x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. All right, so here's kind of the plan of attack. We want to get everything on one side and 0 to the other side, just like we have. And we just want to have one fraction here on, uh, on the side opposite the 0, like, like we do here. All right, and so if we don't have that, then we need to do a little algebra to get it to that situation. That just makes our life easier with what we're going to do here in just a minute. All right, so once we have the one fraction here is less than or greater than or whatever, uh, zero on the other side, then we're going to continue about our merry way. All right, so we, we want to find what are called boundary points. Okay, boundary points. And how you find these boundary points are, since you have just one fraction over here and zero on the other side, we're looking for whatever makes the um, fraction undefined. So in this case, what would make this fraction undefined? This rational expression undefined. Whatever real numbers make the denominator equal to zero, that's where the fraction would be undefined. So x equals four would be a boundary point. Okay. We also were looking for whatever makes the rational expression equal to zero. Well, that comes from whatever makes your numerator equal to zero. So in this case, x equals negative one makes your numerator equal to zero. All right, so really what it boils down to is figure out what makes your numerator equal to zero and what makes your denominator equal to zero. Okay, we're gonna call those numbers boundary points. Now, we're going to sketch them out on a number line. So if this is the number line, okay, and we're gonna put in there's negative one and there's four, okay. And now we're going to use that same idea that we did when solving quadratic inequalities, the little test point idea, right, where this is region A, B, and C. We're just going to go region by region. So in region A, what would be a good test point? Everybody agree negative 2? Right. And so right inside here, we've got our one fraction on one side and 0 on the other side. This is where we want to put our test point in. So we're going to have negative 2 plus 1 divided by negative 2 minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. And all we're trying to determine is if that's true or false. So you get negative 1 over negative 6, and that is true. Okay. And then region B. What's a good test point in region B? 0. So you plug 0 in, you're going to get 1 over negative 4, and that's false. In region C, what's a good test point? 5. So plug the 5 in, you get 5 plus 1 divided by 5 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And that gives you, what, 6 over 1. So that's true as well. Right? And we want the true region. So that would be region C. So we shade in region C. Put a little arrow on it so it goes on forever. And region A. Okay, now, what about negative 1 and 4? Are they included or are they not included? Okay, well, since it's greater than or equal to, we're thinking, well, they need to be included, right? That's what we've done before. But we have to be a little more careful with rational expressions. And the reason why is because we can't have the denominator be equal to what number? That's right, it can't be equal to zero. So even though this thing right here is telling us, yeah, make these brackets and include them, we can't use four. Because if we use four, then our expression's undefined. Right? So we need a parenthesis at four. And we have a bracket at negative one. Right? So in interval notation, it would be negative infinity to negative one, bracket union four to infinity. So that's the, the thing we have to be very careful about, is even though it says it's greater than or equal to, meaning put brackets on your, on your points there, we can't be on one of them here because it makes the denominator zero. So whatever makes the denominator zero, you can't use it. Okay? All right, let's look at one more. All right, so the, this one's different in that the, uh, uh, you don't have zero on the, on the right side there. So the goal here is to get everything on one side and zero to the other side. So just add one, and you would look like x minus 6 
uh, over x plus 2 plus 1 is less than 0. And then write this on the left-hand side as one fraction. In other words, add these two things together. Well, in order to add them together, you have to have a common what? A common denominator. So the common denominator in this case is x plus 2. So 1 can be written as x plus 2 divided by x plus 2. Right? And so then this numerator plus this numerator is going to give you down to 2x minus 4 all over x plus 2 is less than 0. Everybody see that? Okay, and the reason why we're writing it as one fraction is because it makes all that test point idea just a heck of a lot easier. All right? All right, so now let's get the boundary, the boundary numbers. Okay, so the boundary numbers are what makes the numerator equal to zero and what makes the denominator equal to zero. We're looking for real numbers, all right? So 2x minus 4 equals zero. That means then that x has to equal 2. Right, so that's from the numerator. And from the denominator, we have x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals negative 2. So your boundary numbers are 2 and negative 2. So come up and draw your little number line. Say, all right, here's negative 2, and here's 2. We got region A, B, and C. And so when we go to region A, and we take a test point, our test point would be negative 3. Where are we going to put our test point? Well, you have several places to go. You could put it in back in the original situation here, but then you have to figure out is the left side really less than negative 1 or not. Right? Or you could plug it in down here where we've got uh, 2x minus 4 over x plus 2 is less than 0 and just determine is the thing going to be positive or is it going to be negative. All right, so it doesn't really matter where you put it in. I'm going to put it in down here where it's less than 0 just because I just want to look at the signs. All right, so 2 times negative 3 minus 4 divided by negative 3 plus 2 when you plug that negative 3 in. And so that gives you a negative 6, a negative on the top, and a negative 1 on the bottom, and negative divided by negative is not less than 0, so that would be false. Everybody see what I'm getting at? That's, that's the reason why I like having 0 over there and using that for my test point. Okay, so test point in region B would be 0. No, 0 is not always in region B. It just happens to be for these uh, two examples here. Uh, all right, so plug that in. 2 times 0 is 0, so you get negative 4 on the top and 2 on the bottom, and that is definitely less than 0, so that's true. And in region C, a good test point would be 3. All right, so you get 2 times 3 minus 4 all over 3 plus 2 is less than 0. So 6 minus 4, that would be 2 on the top, 5 on the bottom, and that is not less than 0. That's false. So we want the area B. And what about the endpoints, negative 2 and 2, are they included or not? Well, since this is less than 0, they're not included. And then you don't even have to worry about if it makes the denominator 0 or not. Right? So in interval notation, it would be negative 2, comma 2. All right. So the little test point idea back from when we did quadratic inequalities in fact, that's why I showed you that back with the quadratic inequalities, because it comes in handy for other functions. Uh, I mean, we could solve this graphically, uh, but the graph is, they, they can look kind of ugly. Right? Remember when we get rational functions, the, the graphs can look kind of ugly on a calculator. Right? But this analytical approach here of, of just doing the test point situation um, you know, works out pretty nice. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.